This is the Bexon ticket machine. These were used on Dutch public transport from around 1952 until 1980. They were used mostly in buses and trams. The history of the company behind this is rather long and complicated, so I'll go through it very quickly. It started with Christopher Becker, he was born in 1805, and in Groningen in 1829 he started making precision weights and uh, balance scales. Uh, by, nine, by 1842 he moved to Arnhem and got a business partner and was running the company Becker and Budding. Uh, he was a rather difficult man to get along with and he was in trouble with the local council and the tax office. So in 1855 he signed over his part of the company to his, uh, his uh, uh, partner and then uh, put a, a notice in the newspaper saying goodbye to both his enemies and his friends and fled to the United States. In uh, New York, in Brooklyn, he founded a new company once again making uh, precision weights and balance scales. And this company was Becker and Sons. He did this together with his two eldest sons. He had two more sons and uh, they were Henry Lewis and Julian Johan. Uh, those two younger sons went back to the Netherlands in 1872. But uh, I'll get back to those two later. Those, the two eldest sons, um, they uh, eventually left their father's company and founded their own company in New York, uh, Becker Brothers, once again making precision weights and uh, balance scales. And yeah, the, these uh, scales were very precise and were the kind of scales that were used for measuring gold and things like that. So they were used during the Canadian gold rush. The, those two younger sons, they went to, uh, to Rotterdam in 1872, where they founded another company called Becker's Sons. And uh, yeah, this was in Rotterdam. Uh, about 20 years later, one of those two uh, sons uh, left to Brussels to start his own company. This was uh, Henry Louis, uh, or Henri Louis as he became. So uh, yeah, he founded his company, H.L. Becker Fils et Co. in uh, Brussels in 1895. But uh, yeah, that's uh, Becker's son's company uh, in Rotterdam. Uh, was now being run just by uh, uh, the uh, other son, uh, Julian Johan, and his two sons as well. Uh, Rotterdam eventually became too noisy and had too much vibration for uh, making precision instruments. Uh, it was too difficult to calibrate them. So the company moved to Brummen, which is a small village out in the country in uh, East the east of the Netherlands. And there they continue to make these, uh, yeah, these precision uh, weights and balance scales. In uh, 1926, the company was bought by Hollandse Optiekfabriek NV. This is a, a public company. Uh, yeah, yeah, from then on it was no longer a family company. I think those, the, all the beggars uh, left and uh, one of the sons, uh, Julian Henry Becker, he went to Delft and once again set up a company, again to make uh, precision weights and balance scales. But uh, yeah, Becker's sons uh, continued to be called that because the name Becker had such a reputation. So. Um, yeah, even though it was officially called the Hollandse Optiekfabriek. Um, the company was quite successful and started diversifying. 
not only making precision weights and balance scales, but also gas valves and water valves and yeah, other things. They also got a, a contract with the Ministry of Defence to make parts for grenades. And uh, yeah, in the Second World War, the uh, the company was gutted. All the machinery was uh, confiscated by the Germans. And uh, yeah, eventually, after the after the war ended, they managed to uh, recover most of the equipment and uh, yeah, restarted uh, production. So they went back to making weights and precision scales and uh, gas and water valves and various other things. They managed to land a, a contract to make uh, bicycle hubs. The government had noticed that uh, yeah, we needed more bicycles and yeah, the bicycle hubs used to be made in Germany and there were not enough of them. So they, they made, started making bicycle hubs uh, and they marketed these using the name Bexen, a shortened version of uh, Becker's sons. Around this time they also designed this ticket machine, uh, which they also marketed as uh, a Bexen. Uh, yeah, these, this was all fairly successful, uh, but they had some quality control problems, especially with those bicycle hubs. Uh, and uh, yeah, in 1967 they were uh, bought by Simmons Precision. Uh, after a few years they stopped making balance scales and uh, yeah, they also diversified into electronics and they developed uh, an electronic version of this ticket machine. But that never came into use because in 1980 the government switched to, um, or the public transport switched to, to uh, a national system uh, with uh, uh, zones and uh, yeah, zoning tickets. And so these ticket machines were no longer necessary and immediately from one day to the next they were obsolete. Uh, the next year uh, Becker's Sons was uh, liquidated the electronics department was reabsorbed into the rest of uh, Simmons and the metalworks uh, part of the company in uh, Bremen was sold off. Uh, that didn't last. The company or the, the organization that bought it got funding from the local council to, in order to keep those metalworking jobs. But uh, yeah, within a year the company was bankrupt and the management was uh, prosecuted for uh, tax evasion and fraud. So anyway, these uh, Becker or Bexon uh, ticket machines were used for almost 30 years uh, throughout uh, Dutch public transport. I have two of these Bexon ticket machines. The one on the left here is in a stand, so it could be used as a, uh, a ticket machine at a fixed location. But of course, it also has a leather strap so you can pull it out and use it portably. There are also shoulder straps available, of course. Uh, this one uh, works slightly better than this one, so I'll demonstrate how to use it on this uh, fixed machine. They have uh, pre-printed tickets, or rather everything's pre-printed except for the ticket details. Um, yeah, this one was used in uh, Centraal Nederland, center of Netherlands in Utrecht. And this one was used in the vicinity of Haarlem. Uh, there are these uh, levers on the front to uh, enter the ticket details. The first four levers uh, are for entering a, a four digit code which represents the uh, starting uh, station or or bus stop. The next four digits it says uh, destination essentially here or two but on the tickets what's actually being used is the number of zones so you enter here how many zones the ticket is uh, valid for. The next four uh, levers are for the price 
so the number of guilders and cents. Uh, there's a small stopper here, so this fourth uh, lever, the cents lever, only goes up to five, so it's normally zero or five. On this one, it actually uh, has a, a screw uh, bolted in here to, to work as a stop. Uh, the lever after that is the uh, type of ticket, so it's a single or return or whatever, or discount ticket. And uh, yeah, after that you have the uh, date. The first two are for the uh, date of the month, then the month itself. And lastly, it's uh, three levers for the time. Two for the uh, hour, 24 hour clock and one for the uh, minutes in five minute increments. Once you've entered all the information, you have to turn the lever to uh, print the ticket. Uh, the lever has a small stopper at the front that you have to push in and then you can turn. The first turn actually prints the information on the ticket, right there, and the second turn expels the ticket. This little stopper gets pushed out during that second turn so that it uh, stops your rotation automatically. Unfortunately it doesn't push it out quite far enough. There we go. And uh, yeah, here is uh, what was just printed on, from uh, the information I entered. Uh, this counter here, um, that should increment every time you uh, uh, do a ticket, but on this one it doesn't quite work. That counter is not uh, connected to anything, it's not printed, so it's just an uh, indication of how many tickets are, are sold. Uh, yeah, so what's printed here is exactly this information, but also a small number uh, vertically which is the serial number of the machine, the serial number that's right here. Um, so that really that's all there is to say about using it in practice, but of course there's also, uh, you also might have to refill it. There's a, a key on the left here, uh, it's now uh, rotated to this white dot. If you turn it to this top uh, red dot and you can remove the key, then it's locked. The uh, crank doesn't move, it's locked in place. So, uh, yeah, that, you do that at the end of the day. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you can turn it to the white dot to uh, start using it normally. But if you turn it further to the uh, bottom red dot, that is when you... Uh, open up the machine. It opens by pulling this side out like that and here you can see the mechanism. Here is the roll of the pre-printed tickets and down here is a roll of carbon paper. Those two come together here and this is where things get printed. During the first turn this gets pulled downwards and uh, yeah, that pushes down the, the paper onto these uh, wheels. Th these are the wheels that are set with the levers. So yeah, each of these have different uh, symbols on it. And uh, yeah, uh, it's very simple. The carbon paper get roll gets rolled up here. And uh, the ticket gets uh, expelled through this uh, yeah, through this paper, this metal um, hole. On the back of the tickets are uh, pre-printed serial numbers, so that's uh, and that's also visible through this uh, window here to make sure that the uh, paper is aligned properly. That way, the it, the uh, data actually gets printed in the uh, blank strip in the middle of this ticket.
Uh, here you see a, uh, these, these wheels. This wheel um, goes at half the speed of this one, the one that uh, cranks the paper, or that cranks the mechanism. And uh, yeah, this one is used to expel the little uh, stopper during the second uh, turn of the crank. Uh, this is a mechanism to make sure that the crank can't move when the when the machine is open, and also when when you, if you try to uh, uh, close this up with this open, it also uh, blocks you. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, you can sw swing this to the side if you need to replace the paper, so the paper can slide through underneath here. On the bottom of the machine is another uh, register or counter. This adds together all the uh, prices, so it gives the total amount of money that's been raised using this machine. And lastly, this knob here, I don't know why they've used this, but you can turn this to disable the uh, paper uh, transfer. So if, if you turn it this way, you can print a ticket, but it's not ejected. I've no idea what that's, why that is there. So this was the Bexon ticket machine. Thank you for watching.